Let me um, then officially good morning. The time is now 9.35 a.m. and a quorum of the board is present. Um, the State Board of Education meeting of January 11, 2011 is called to order. Uh, Governor, you're welcome to sit at the, the head of the table, too, if you'd like, whatever's more comfortable. Well, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> want to, they get a, good, a better view this way. Okay. Um, let's just get right to that because the governor's been kind enough to uh, give us some of his time today. And I, I do want to make an admission on my part as state superintendent that I think other people are saying some other things now. Uh, I have to admit, last year at this time, when I saw that nerd ad, <laughs> I thought there's no way this guy can get elected. Uh, but uh, I, I've, we've had a chance to uh, to work together, and I, I can't thank you enough for your energy, your passion, uh, your smarts, uh, the fact that you've done this right out of the block, that you're going to spend a little bit of time with the Board of Ed. I know it's before you run to the auto uh, show, so I know your time is short. But we wanted to give you a chance to... to uh, to, to say, make some comments, and uh, again, uh, and then the board, I know, uh, President Kathleen Strauss and uh, John Austin may uh, have some comments also, but thanks so much for your attendance today. And ladies and gentlemen, let's wel welcome the governor of the state. Thank you. No, I'm honored to be with you and excited. I believe it's a great opportunity, and truly the work you're doing here is critically important for the future of our state. Our kids are our future. So I really appreciate the efforts, and I look for an opportunity to learn from you um, because you have far more expertise in education than I do. So what I would like to have and make sure is we have a great constructive dialogue because we have significant challenges, and it's time to address those challenges. We've gone through a period of people fighting too much, and now it's time to solve problems. And that's the focus I want to bring to things, and that's the discussion I, want, I hope to have with you. Um, there's a number of areas that we do want to take on. One of the things I'd really like to look at is um, what we can come to, up together with with respect to educational reform. Um, I would like the opportunity to go to the legislature in the first half of this year and make sure we have the opportunity to put any of those issues on the table and see how we can move forward in a positive, constructive way. And I want to do this in partnership with both the local school districts, with you in particular, and with the federal government. I've uh, been fortunate enough to have some good discussions with Secretary Duncan already in terms of getting his insights and thoughts. And I was just in Washington yesterday. So it's something that is a collaborative effort. I think we have a real opportunity to say, let's get out of some of the struggles, the challenges we've had in the past, and let's mo move forward and start looking towards the future. And to do that, that's where, again, I really look forward to the opportunity to learn from you and have a constructive dialogue on what we think is the best way to move forward together. Um, one thing I will push very hard, though, is um, a concept that we're trying to communicate to everyone in government is moving forward in a positive way and taking action. Um, I call it relentless positive action because <laughs> that's the opportunity. We are at the bottom in many respects, not necessarily in education, but in many respects in our state, and the goal here is not to do incrementalism, is not to move from 50 to 47 or 45. So everything I want to look at and everything we're going to exert effort on is how to be best practice in the country or the world. So that's the approach I believe you also share, and let's make it a team effort. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to learning. Thank you, Governor. Governor, those are words we really enjoy hearing. We, we're delighted that you're here. We, we welcome you and congratulate you on your smashing victory. Thank it's you. really very impressive. And we really look forward to working with you. We look forward to, to doing just what you said. We have a record of bipartisan cooperation. We thought we were modeling for the legislature. <laughs> <laughs> we hope we'll model for the new legislature. Uh, but we've, we've always done everything, almost always unanimously, but we're both Democrats and Republicans. But when we, differ, when we didn't, it wasn't based on party, it was just based on the individual issue when people had different views. And we, we really uh, pride ourselves on our record of uh, civility and bipartisanship, plus what we've actually accomplished. I mean, that, 
you've actually accomplished some good things. And uh, we hope to share those with you. And uh, we've done a lot in the area of uh, setting high standards. They're models for the country. We're considered among the best uh, standards in the country. We set state high school graduation requirements, which was a new thing when we did it. Uh, they're rigorous. We want to emphasize more relevance and relationships now. That's the other two R's. But uh, they're all these things are we've, we've really prided ourselves on working on. And um, we developed a very good model last year. We, we worked, <coughs> the board set this up. Uh, we invited people to do present presentations to us over a period of about six months on how to fix the state's <coughs> education program if whatever needed to be fixed and the revenue situation. And the, we recognized we couldn't get revenue without restructuring. So we called it reform, restructuring, and revenue. And we know that it was a, a <coughs> joint project that John took the leadership of, really, and uh, we, we agreed to it unanimously. So we, we all made some compromises in the process. But we have, a good, we have a good plan, which I hope you'll have a chance to see sometime. And, and we can talk about it. We look forward to having meetings with you, our leadership with you on a fairly regular basis if that could be worked out. Uh, we're delighted that you have Mike as your education advisor. We think he's pretty good, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're delighted that you do too. So I think we, we look forward to working hand in hand with you and really correcting the things that need correcting and expanding the things that are really good. And we have a lot of really good things going on in education in Michigan. So I think we have to take credit for the good. And a lot of its attention is paid to the, to the problems which we, do, which we know we have and we're working on those. But we also should take credit for the, the excellent schools that we have, the, the committed teachers, the dedicated teachers that we have in Michigan, the administrators. We have so many people that are that have committed their lives really to providing education to the students in Michigan. And it's for the benefit of the entire state, not just for those students, but we, everybody in the state needs a quality education. And it's the best economic development tool I think we have in the state. Uh, so we're really looking forward to, to working with you. We're delighted that you're here and uh, we think it sends a strong signal and we're just very pleased. So thank you very much for coming. And I think John Austin might want to say a few words as well. John, please. Oh, uh, I appreciate that. I uh, also want to say thanks for your um, rewards and your um, interest in, in working together in partnership and having the kind of dialogue that you propose. You know, we are also very committed to forward-looking, relentless reform. Uh, we have to make the education system and the outcomes for our people uh, the best in the country. And as Kathy indicated, you know, we've worked together as a board, uh, eager to work with you as the governor and the legislature, uh, advancing some of the priorities we think are most important, which I hope we can uh, team up on and find common ground. How do we reimagine our education system so it's totally performance-based, so that we just care about the outcomes, and we insist that the outcomes uh, are real? that young people learn and they graduate and they go on to post-secondary or work or to create new businesses, which we need them to do. Uh, how do we make sure we have incredible teaching and incredible teachers, which are the key to driving the achievement gains, particularly for those who aren't achieving? We've got as a state to do a lot to uh, ensure that our teachers are the best in the country, all of them, everywhere. And that, I think, is a real priority for us to get the kind of outcomes that we need. And as the board is set in our plans. And finally, we, we hope that we can find ways in this tough budget climate to work with you to rearrange our budget priorities so that we can tackle the tough issues. How do we restructure and redesign the delivery of education to save money, but also so we can invest in early childhood and in our university education and our community colleges so that we can ensure that we get those outcomes. So those are the kinds of notes that we're making our priorities. We'll talk more about them today as we look ahead, but we're very excited about uh, working together with you uh, to advance our education system in a forward-looking and reform-minded way. So thank you for your, your words of encouragement and your being here to um, signal our ability to work together. Thank you. 
And uh, can I ask Nancy or Eileen as our uh, ranking Republican officers to also share a few of their perspective? Because as Kathy said, we do have a history of working incredibly well together across the aisle over here. Uh, and we're joined at the hip in terms of our reform commitment. And I hope if you have a second, you uh, listen to some of our Republican colleagues uh, have their own perspective. Well, I appreciate the opportunity, John. I'm, I'm going to defer to Eileen, I think, because I, I, I just didn't, I didn't prepare for this. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, in all honesty, um, I, I, I will say that I'm just thrilled to have you here, uh, Governor. I just think it's uh, so important to have that message um, sent to everyone that this is a, this is a team project. It isn't individuals. Um, so I, I think that that's, that being said, I'm going to turn that over to Eileen and as the ranking Republican here <laughs> uh, uh, to uh, say a few words on our behalf. Thank you, Nancy. I'm not prepared either, but that's never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I would like to say, by a bizarre set of circumstances, this is my first day back on the board, but she's right. I have two more years on it than Nancy does. Uh, one of the things that I find so exciting about you, you being the governor of the state at this time is that we have a unique opportunity to look at the things that we've done that are well, well done and to start trying to really re reimagine what has to happen for outcomes. I'm delighted to hear John talk about this, but I want to um, have the board honor the work that's underway right now, the history that we have, the things that have worked in the past, and the things that haven't, uh, and also to recognize that there's a moment in time where we could be looking at things like distance learning. We're going to be talking today about making sure that uh, student outcomes are actually reflected in our MEEP scores. Uh, we're going to be reshaping the conversation that we're having with the states to make sure that we in Michigan are ready for what's happening in other countries and other, in other states. And as we do that, there will be change. It'll be gut-wrenching change for the education world, too, if we do our job right because of what you're doing and what you have to do to restructure the state's economy. Um, I'm honored to be serving at this time under you. I know uh, that this is a difficult time for the entire state. I know that we'll be changing people's lives. I know that that's a challenge. But I really believe that Michigan wants this change, and I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your wonderful comments, because I view it as a great opportunity, and that's why I apologize for somewhat disrupting your meeting at the start, <laughs> but I thought it was a great opportunity just to come start the process in a positive way. The comments are wonderful. This is our opportunity to reinvent Michigan, and it really the kids are central to that, our children, our students, and that's our long-term legacy. So you're right at the the center of this effort. So I really appreciate your hard work. I'm going to let you get back to work, stop disrupting the, the, the good things you're going, and I look forward to continuing a dialogue. And as Mike knows, we've already started a very good dialogue, and he may not know I'm after him again already this week. So <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to getting an update on how the rest of the meeting goes. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to stop by and introduce myself. I know some of you personally, I've worked with some of you in the past. John and I have had a working relationship. And I look forward to working with all of you over the next few years. So thank you. Well, thank we, you you're welcome you. anytime. You know you're a member of the board. Yeah. Can I say something real quick? Oh, that's Marianne oh. McGuire on the phone. She's she's visiting her daughter in Los Angeles. Good morning, Governor, and uh, thank you very much for coming to our meeting. And uh, I just wanted to to say, as one of the board members from Detroit how much I appreciated uh, your outreach to the city last summer during your campaign. And uh, in that vein, um, I would urge you to continue um, uh, a dialogue with the city and uh, with community leaders as well as uh, elected officials. And, um, as you know, we've got some real problems with uh, with the schools, and I'm very hopeful that uh, with your leadership, we can uh, come to some good decisions there. So thank you again for uh, all your attention and uh, your, your willingness to uh, help us. Thanks so much, thank Governor, you. Thank you. for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Thank you, Governor. Private board property back there. Glad I cleaned my desk. You're going to want cast for the next item anyway. This will be lost for hours now. <laughs> got out the back. Okay. Good. Well, President Obama will be here at 1030. <laughs> kind of stacked them up today. We <laughs> no, we appreciate I know the board and uh, we really appreciate the governor taking this time in his very first month on the job and uh, yeah. I think the board, I appreciate the comments you made to the governor. I think they're very constructive and going to really help move the state. So <clears throat> I think we're doing the president's report and then we're going to do the election. Can approve the agenda though? <clears throat> I don't think we've done that yet. Good idea. So approval of agenda and the order of priority. Yeah. Um, I have a, so moved by Cass, supported yeah, by Nancy. Uh, any changes? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same. I think officially the governor wasn't here because we didn't approve the agenda. So, <laughs> um, President's report. And, and you know, you've just done a fantastic job, uh, Kath, and we really appreciate your your kindness, your vision, your smarts, and uh, but I want to yield to you for your final president's report. Thank you. I want to wish everybody a happy new year for starters. I should have done that to start altogether. But I think we're off to a very good start with the governor. I think that's, that's very hopeful. Look forward to close working relationships with him. And it's hard to believe <coughs> that, that it's 10 years that I've been president of the it's hard to have, you know, time flies when you're having fun, I guess. So I guess I've been having fun despite the frustrations at times, but uh, it's been great. And I want to thank all of you and, and your predecessors for selecting me five times. It's really, uh, I was honored, very honored and humbled. <coughs> it was been a real privilege to represent the board. And I, I mean, everybody represents the board, but in the official capacity as president, I really, really did enjoy it. Uh, when we, when I started, Michigan's economy was still riding high. We thought uh, it wasn't to some of the very uh, perceptive observers, but uh, and some of the people in industry. But we had a different perspective, and things have changed so much, and we have done a lot to help move the needle, I think, where we've tried at any rate to uh, make people understand that, that the economy has changed, that the kinds of jobs that were there are no longer, and that we have to have people educated to, to take part in, in this new economy. So that we've, and we've responded to that. The, I think we've accomplished a lot, and we've faced enormous challenges, and we've, as I said, to the governor of just changing the graduation requirements, making them state requirements. We worked on that for a long time, uh, looking at the high school, high school uh, graduation requirements and what, what should be included. And that was a big, big step that we took. And we did it in a very bipartisan manner. And it was, we lobbied jointly. We lobbied the legislature. We convinced them, I, I think. Uh, the fact that we uh, 
that we really wanted to include. We have not only uh, English language arts and math and, and science. What are you all looking at up there? <laughs> Nothing, I guess. <laughs> Structure every ten years. It's kind oh, of a yeah. Oh, we're sneaking oh, pictures it? in there. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I th it was very important that we included economics and civics and history and geography and uh, the arts, the online learning course. The fact that we added the foreign language requirement, I think, was very important because all of those are necessary for full education. We can't just do it. English and math are important and science, but we have to do more than that if we want to have well-rounded citizens who will be informed and participating as, as citizens of their, in our democracy. Um, we went through a, we, we had to select superintendents twice, <coughs> and we went through that process in a very constructive fashion. We, did it completely in the open as the Open Meetings Act said we should. We never had one criticism from the press on the process, which was really amazing. Other boards, public boards, got into hot water by not doing it right. But we did do it right. We picked two good superintendents. And uh, we, we did that. That was a, That's a major responsibility of the board, is selecting the superintendent. So we, we've done that twice uh, in the last 10 years. And we had we think we came out pretty well with that. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when I started, uh, I, I proposed, I, I was promoting full day, full service schools. I thought schools should be the hub of the community and the buildings are there and they're there at every community and that we, we could provide other services could be headquartered in those buildings as well, health services, social services. And it, it's been done in a number of schools around the state, and it works. The health clinics especially really serve a purpose for the community, and it gets people in this, into the schools who ordinarily don't feel comfortable going there. I remember visiting, well, I've been in several. One of them that I had been in in Kalamazoo was the one that really egged me on to do this because their, their achievement scores went up. It was amazing. And, and the things that the, that the uh, people who worked in the clinic told me about the kinds of questions the students had and the kinds of issues they had just boggled my mind. And, and it was just very important for that health clinic to be there. Then we were in, Liz and I were <coughs> in, in Grand Rapids a couple of years ago in a, in a section of Grand Rapids that was, uh, that had, at one time it, the building was, had built, built like the building of my apartment for, in the 20s. And it was a beautiful old building that had fallen into disrepair. The neighborhood had gone through a lot of changes. It was now largely Latino. And the, uh, the, the parents were not, comfortable going into the school. And they re they got a grant from the Kent ISD. I don't know where the Kent ISD got the grant from, but the, they gave the grant to Grand Rapids to redo this. They renovated the building. They added a health clinic. And they added a room for parents, a resource <coughs> room for parents to come and feel comfortable, sort of with couches and things. Well, the parents started coming to the school for the clinic and then they would wander into the building and they'd sort of peek into their child's class. And before long, they were coming and using this resource room. And the scores of the children started going up. It, it, it makes so much sense. So I think it's, it's really uh, it was something when I campaigned for re-election two years ago, I brought it up again and people responded very positively. So I think it's not, a, it's not something we should just ignore. We do have a lot more after-school programs now than we did in those days, and that's very important because so many children were going home to empty houses and were getting into trouble. If they, if they went home, they watched television, or sat in front of the television set all afternoon, or they were out on the streets getting into trouble or causing trouble. And it's, the after-school programs have been very helpful both for tutoring purposes, but for recreation purposes as well. 
And uh, it, it, that's something that I was very uh, pleased to do at that time. We brought together people from all the, the social services, human services department, the uh, health department, <coughs> with it because they they had promoted community schools, and uh, uh, people from all around the state came. So that was uh, they started doing these after school programs as a result. So that I think had some had some benefits, not as much as I had hoped, but it was it was still very good. Uh, let me see. I wrote a lot, and I don't think I'm going to read. I'm not going to read it all. We can read it into the record. Yes. <laughs> um, the whole, um, uh, we, we set up, oh, this is about eight years ago, maybe early, maybe nine years ago, uh, the Leading Change Initiative, where we set up five task forces chaired by members of the board uh, to look at the ver five areas that we thought were essential to creating good education. And they, the task, they, we had about a hundred people participated in these task forces, and they represented, uh, uh, they represented uh, teachers and administrators, uh, business people, the uh, parents groups, various members of the community, people from nonprofits. Uh, John and Eileen chaired the one on uh, uh, ensuring excellent educators. We had the first one was ensuring early childhood literacy because we were convinced and we still are very strongly in favor of early childhood education being absolutely a very essential part of making sure that K-12 is successful. So there's a lot of talk now. There was a very good letter to the editor of the Free Press a couple uh, last week, I think it was, uh, supporting from business people supporting uh, early childhood education as being a very worthwhile investment. Uh, the, but the five task forces were er ensuring early childhood literacy, elevating educational leadership, and Mary Ann McGuire chaired that one and focused on principles, integrating schools and communities, because the community can't succeed if the schools aren't good, and the schools don't succeed if the community isn't supportive of them. So we really have to make sure that we work well with, with the communities. Enhancing the information age, embracing, excuse me, embracing the information age, which was t is technology, and we added, a, a, as a result of that, we added a, a standard to our teacher standards that teacher preparation should include more on teaching future teachers how to embrace technology in their teaching. Uh, and ensuring excellent educators, which was the one on making sure we have good teachers in every classroom. Mm -hmm. So th those were uh, really, uh, those reports still guide what we do. That was a very worthwhile endeavor that we undertook that time, and, it, and uh, it, we worked on those for about a year uh, with, with, the, with the community support. So um, we figured that those five areas were vital to the future of our children, our schools, and our community, and our state. So that was a major undertaking. We've passed a lot of very, very good policies. Uh, we have one on uh, healthy nutrition, which we focused on. We know that children have to have good breakfast to start the day, healthy, uh, we've been co focusing more and more, as, as you know, on uh, healthy foods, not just giving them, <coughs> but uh, having the healthy. And la just last month, we adopted new, uh, improved uh, nutrition standards. We, the, the whole, we have policies on a healthy school environment, making sure the schools are safe. Uh, we have strong anti-bullying policy, model policy for local districts to uh, adopt. Uh, the universal design for education with Liz Bauer's leadership, and that undergirds everything we do now. Uh, we have one on positive behavior support. We did one on Native American logos to take into account the, the, the concerns of the Native American community. We focused on good education and the things that we need to support the people who provide the education and the, and the students in the school. 
So um, we focused a lot on teacher preparation. We're still working on that. Uh, that's absolutely critical. As John said, and we all know that we, the importance of the teacher in every classroom is critical. I heard Ernie Duncan on the radio yesterday. Uh, I don't remember what program I was had on, but um, he talked about the effect. And we had we had the man who did that study present to us years ago. Uh, Bill, who was from the University of Tennessee at the time, now he's in North oh, Carolina. Oh, uh, the value-added The value-added guy, uh, right. Oh, Tits, uh, I can't uh, think of his name. Saunders. Saunders, right. right. Uh, he came and presented to us. Thanks, Nancy. <laughs> uh, Started checking after that. Right. Uh, but he, 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 he presented to us, and we, you know, he gave us the, the, the background, and this is what Arnie Duncan was quoting yesterday, that a good teacher, if a student has a good teacher for three years in a row, it, he does much better the rest of his life <laughs> in school, and then probably in life. And if you have a poor teacher, it, the effects are cumulative as well. So the value added, that's what we're basing all this, this teacher valuation on now too, the value added and how good it is. So we've had all these people come in and talk to us um, over the years and, we, and it was been, it's been very, very important. And now uh, this past year, as we talked about before, we developed this, our report on reform, restructure and revenue based on the board setting up the program, asking the speakers, picking the speakers, getting the speakers, uh, and then working through what we wanted the report to say, which was a major accomplishment in my estimation. So uh, I'm really proud of what we've done, and I'm proud of all of my colleagues, and I look forward, I, 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 I've said it over and over again how pleased I am at the way we have worked collegially in a very civil, grown-up matter, and uh, I'm looking forward to that continuing, and I know that uh, we're going to be doing good things in the next two years, next, eight, next whatever. Uh, so I thank you all very much for your trust in me and letting me do this for 10 years, and I appreciate your support and your help, your understanding, and I thank <coughs> you. I just wanted to, uh, on behalf of the board and, and actually channeling many of the good minds we have, and including Eileen Hamilton, just retired as board secretary, uh, say a few words, uh, you know, celebrating your tenure as state board president, but also reminding us all you are going to be with us and active and a part of our team uh, for the foreseeable future and for a long time, hopefully. Uh, you know, you've been so strong an advocate for the constitutional role of the board, that the board was set up, as you probably recall, in the 60s, as a long-serving, <laughs> eight-year terms, uh, put it, yeah. <laughs> a board that would, um, would purposely be above politics of the moment, to take the longer view, and to be the champion for education and what needs to happen to drive education forward in the long term. And you've been a fierce advocate for the maintaining the role of the board uh, and its responsibility. And then, as you noted, you have led us in accomplishing so much in this state. So before we look ahead again, uh, as you mentioned, the, this board under your presidency has passed 48 education policies of note, m many of which are nationally recognized as in the vanguard of thoughtful, innovative education policy. I mean, you mentioned several of them. The, high expectations K-12 content, the high school reforms, the assessment regimes, meet merit that we have put in place, health, nutrition, universal education, anti-bullying, 21st century schools, the round school learning, which Michigan created, uh, and our commitment to teacher and administrative credentialing. You have uh, been recognized already, and you're not done yet with significant awards, the NASB Distinguished Service Award, the MEMSA Educational Leadership Award, the Burns Seifelt Lifetime Achievement Award, the <laughs> 8 over 80 uh, Tickham Olam Award. But Kathy told me the one she's proudest about is the Federal Bar Association's Wade McCree Award for Social Justice. 
which he received a year ago or two years ago, a lifetime of delivery on social justice, not just commitment to, but achievement in. But for me, all of those accomplishments, policies, recognitions, aren't what's important. What's important is what has happened to learning outcomes in Michigan during, on your watch, under your leadership. And over the last 10 years, Michigan's NAEP scores in fourth and eighth grade math have gone up. Our reading scores are up. Our Michigan merit scores, which are new, are moving up. AP test taking has doubled over the past 10 years. Uh, community college enrollments are exploding, up 80% over the past 10 years. University enrollments up. More people are achieving and realizing what you started out in your remarks. We need a next step of education. Uh, and you know, I think I just read a quote in the paper. Um, Terry Babbitt, uh, Mona Shore superintendent, was quoted as saying, everyone today is so focused on student learning, student learning. That is different from a decade ago. I mean, we all in the state, our education stakeholders, have, I hope, contributed to that. But you have led and can take some ownership of those education improvements that have been encouraged and facilitated and nurtured um, on your watch. And so um, we are electing officers today, and I appreciate your uh, uh, willingness to uh, uh, pass the baton uh, to someone at this table, but uh, also uh, wanted to herald your leadership and appreciate it very much, and in ways that you are too humble to note. Uh, and, and on behalf of the board, uh, say thanks for your presidency, and thank you for continuing with us. Thank you, John. Just a great summary and reminds us of uh, so many achievements that uh, Cass has been responsible for. Um, you know what I forgot to do in the, in the uh, first of all, welcome Eileen and Richard as new members. We're so happy to have you at the table. <coughs> and I forgot to actually have formal introductions to uh, uh, by our new and great, well, soon to be new, I guess there's a formal action item coming up at some point today. but. Uh, I just, uh, I, I want to say this for a moment. I mean, I watched Mertz here late every night the last week to try to get this ready. And uh, I just can't thank her enough for her dedication. I did say to her last night, you can't burn out at this though, too. So we're going to have to just make some adjustments, but just great. But your first formal kind of activity here would then be uh, to, to make introductions as you, as we do typically. Okay, so I'd like to introduce the people at the table to you, the board. The chairman of the board, seated here to my left, is Michael Flanagan. He's the superintendent of public instruction and he serves as chairman of the board. The president of the board is Kathleen Strauss. She's from Detroit. The vice president of the board is John Austin. He's from Ann Arbor. Marianne McGuire usually sits right in this chair uh, to the left of John Austin, but she's on the telephone, right, Marianne? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> She's from Detroit. Richard Ziley, who's here at his first Board of Education meeting, newly elected, is also from Detroit. Matinga Ragatz, who is the Teacher of the Year for this school year, and she teaches in Grand Ledge. She's a Global Studies teacher in high school. Eileen Weiser, I don't know, are we calling you new or not, Eileen? Eileen has, been, has served on the board before. She's from Ann Arbor, and she is beginning a new term. Cassandra Albrich from Rochester Hills, Dan Varner, he's from Detroit, Nancy Danhoff, the board's NASB delegate, she's from East Lansing, and Mike told you I'm Marilyn Schneider. There's staff here, you want to raise your hand when I say your name, then people can recognize you. Sally Vaughn is the Chief Academic Officer and Deputy Superintendent, Carol Wallenberg, Deputy Superintendent, Mary Alice Galloway, Deputy Superintendent, School Reform Officer. Marty Ackley, Director of Communications. Lisa Hansconnect, Legislative Director. Lindy Bush, Director, Early Childhood Education and Family Services. Mary Ann Chartran, Director, Grants Coordination and School Support. Patty Cantu, Director, Career and Technical Education Services. Janet Laverty, brand new, also in her position, Director of Financial Management. Linda Forward, Director, Education Improvement and Innovation. Flora Jenkins, Director of Professional Preparation. Joseph Martineau, Director, Education Assessment and Accountability. Hopefully I caught everybody. And the association people that I know. And if, I, if you're here and I have not mentioned your name, if you'd introduce yourself to me at some point, I would greatly appreciate that so I could introduce you the next time. Um, Jim Ballard, Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals. 
David Borth, Network of Michigan Educators, Bruce Fay, Wayne Risa, Bill Mays, Michigan Association of School Administrators, David Michelson, and Linda Myers from the Michigan Education Association, Judy Pritchett, Macomb Intermediate School District, Linda Wasick, Mis Michigan Association of School Administrators, and Billy Wimmer, Michigan Council of Charter School Authorizers. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Arts, whatever you prefer. I have an alias. No one knows what to call me. Graduate now to her full name. Right, right. <laughs> uh, the first item, uh, an important item, obviously, as John referred to, is the election of State Board of Education officers for the 2011-12 year. And uh, each odd year, uh, and this is a particularly odd year, <laughs> that uh, according to the bylaws, the State Board of Ed members elect officers for president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and NASB delegate. That's the National Association of State Boards of Education. So this is kind of how it works for those that are new and don't remember, but the, the chairman, in this case, that's me, declares that nominations are in order for the Office of President, and each board member wishing to do so may make one nomination. A second is not required, but may be made if so desired. Are there uh, nominations for uh, the Office of President of the State Board of Education? Kathleen. Well, I would like to nominate John Austin. Uh, John has been on the board now for uh, ten, years. 10 years, and we have worked very closely together this whole 10 years, and he has been an outstanding board member. As I said to the governor, John took the lead on developing our, our proposal, our plan, uh, reform, restructure, and revenue. Uh, He's a policy wonk of the first order. In fact, that's his profession, so <coughs> you, get, you get two for the price of one, so to speak. And uh, I'd like to formally nominate John, president of the board. Nominated by John Austin. Eileen? I would like to support John's uh, nomination, which I know is not a but I also want to address the possibility of a COPEP presidency. Today we listened to the governor, and I'm quoting his words, um, actually I'm describing his passion for education and his interest in supporting us, um, and his commitment to collaboration and moving forward together, which he stated several times, in a new Republican administration, which is the reality. While we're independent of that administration, um, if, as a constitutionally mandated entity, we have to work effectively within the state, within all the constituency who are impacted by education. Uh, Kathleen's reflection on our past history of civility and bipartisan cooperation is absolutely accurate, Kathleen. It's been 12 years since I came on this board. I walked into you, co-president, co uh, with Dorothy Beardmore. And if I'm right, the two of you, I, I can't remember whether you, oh, she was president and then you were vice president, and then you were president and she was vice president. Um, but I remember that it brought the best of everybody's thinking, that it, there was an openness to the board that um, was particularly uh, useful at the time because it was during the uh, Governor Engler's administration. So while the board was uh, close to split or dominated by Democrats, it gave us an opportunity to be able to talk to the administration in a way that might not have happened otherwise. Um, the board currently has five Democrats and three Republicans, but we're in a new Republican administration with a door that's wide open at this point. Um, I would like to think that it's time for a co-presidency because I believe that we have a better opportunity for a vibrant, visionary, bipartisan board at that, with that. And I wish I could take care, or to take part in this leadership cycle, but I have two more years to go um, for my service on the National Assessment Governing Board and its 12th grade NAEP High, High School Commission, which is really important work, and I'll be bringing that, <coughs> that uh, vision and that information to the board at various times. So I would like to nominate Nancy Danhoff as co-vice president of the State Board of Education. I'm confident that as co-presidents, they would present the board's case, actually goals, vision, and the necessary items that we know have to be done with the legislature um, and with schools and with children. I believe that they would present it very well to the administration, to our school personnel, and to the citizens of Michigan. Thanks. Thank you, Eileen. Just, was that co-vice president or co-president? Well, it's co-president. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I will admit I'm <laughs> Ted stymied on process here for a minute. So, um, are there any more nominations? Yeah, are there any more nominations? It's just that this is a nomination for John as president. 
and then there's a separate nomination for the concept of co-president? Yes. Or well, we can do it. It's in the bylaws. That you, we, at that time, we had a 4-4 board. That's uh, The legislature had a 50-50 uh, Democrat-Republican, and they, they had co-speakers, and we had we solved our problem by having co-presidents. But it was a 4-4 board at that time. So how does that affect process? Well, excuse me. Well, I'm this just, is I'm part of the rationale for yeah. why there was a why co-president the, I, I proposed at that point. Process, process, process question. I, I, I'm, so I'm actually thinking out loud to help me with maybe how we establish that first vote. Um, it seems that we need to the size of the motion on the table. table. The motion on the table has to be seconded. Which it was. So the motion on the table that was seconded was uh, John Austin as president. But the bylaws state that a second is the not. The second necessary. is not required in this. Right. Okay. No. But there's, there's, there's another motion, motion on, on the table. table. So there's there's a motion, motion on the table, which is John, John Austin, co-presidency co with Eileen Weiser. Nancy Danhoff. Nancy Danhoff. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That's Eileen's okay. motion yes. is co-presidency with John Austin, serving with Nancy Danhoff. I but there already that would be a substitute motion. Is just this Lisa's going to help me with that. The current motion you're on is this motion. She could be offering an amendment to the motion, or it's a next motion to be taken up after this. I, I would and suggest that it would be a separate motion to nominate Nancy for president. Uh, after whatever vote is taken on my presence. Can, can we have discussion on the first motion, though? Because I think I, I very much, as, as Eileen knows, appreciate the spirit of um, symbolizing our bipartisanship. I also know that when I was elected 10 years ago, it, it turned the board to a Democratic majority. Uh, we, and, and I was a strong champion of that uh, at the time, and under eight years of a Democratic governor, uh, fiercely advocated and ensured that we had Republican partners in leadership positions, which we have had as secretary of the board. And so I would uh, certainly propose that we continue that pattern. Uh, we have famously succeeded at working in our bipartisan way with that configuration. And so I would offer that kind of encouragement for the kind of configuration that I think makes sense. We are uh, in this interesting world of partisan office holders respecting our election and our constituencies. Uh, and so I welcome the nomination for, for president, uh, but I uh, respectfully discourage the notion of a co-presidency. Procedurally, it does indicate that I need to inquire of the nominees in reverse order of being nominated whether the nominees accept the nominations. Um, I do. John? I absolutely do. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm stumbling well, through this I a little bit. I didn't anticipate this. Are there, as, are there any more nominations for uh, president of the State Board of Education? Okay, so the nominations are closed. Uh, a, a roll call vote needs to be taken. I'm just not exactly clear on which. Are we done with discussion? Um, thank you. Please, finish discussion. And I know we're not. <laughs> I think it's important as we move forward that we move forward to say that we have done something in the past, although laudable and although notable, it's not a reason to do it to go forward. I think that what we need to do is to take the best advantage we can for the children of Michigan to be able to have the most open doors possible as we <coughs> go through some very, very tough economic times and we have some very tough decisions to make that we give ourselves, avail ourselves of all of the possible alternatives, all the possible means of communication, <coughs> all the possible means of finding support to best serve the children of Michigan. I think this co-presidency allows that to happen. I think it doesn't diminish the degree of r rapport, respect, and um, honor on any one individual. I think it just gives us the best possible alternative to do the job that needs to be done so that we, in the most uh, successful way, serve the needs of our children of this state. So uh, in that respect, I would support that motion that uh, Eileen makes. Well, the motion on the floor, as I understand it, is the motion to elect uh, 
John is present. That's correct. So uh, uh, I have one procedural question to ask, and I don't know where to direct this to, but I'll. I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> if we if we take the vote on on um, and because I understand this is the current motion on the floor, and the vote is that he um, is accepted, then does that preclude the next vote the possibility of having a co-presidency or not? I think the way that we just figured this out, please, Richard. Point of procedure. What you really have, what Eileen's motion is, is to create an office. So logically, the office has to be created prior to nomination. So I think in order, I think before we proceed, we really have to vote on do we want to create the office of co-presidents, and then we can take nominations for it. Um, so I, I, I would think the next item would be to vote on the office, and then we can proceed with, then we know how to proceed with nominations. I think it's very similar to that, but what we just looked up was, okay. was a variation of that. It's that, in effect, we have an amendment on the floor, and I should ask for a vote on that amendment first, which, in effect, would okay. determine whether or not there is majority uh, <laughs> uh, approval for a co-presidency, and then based on whether that is voted up or down. So before I call for that, though, any further discussion on, on the amendment, which, in effect, is, is for a co-presidency, in effect, what Richard just described. Mm -hmm. There's no further discussion. Then I think there's the, the amendment is whether is to have a co-presidency with both John and Nancy as co-presidents. Do you need me to restate that? That would be great. Yeah. Um, I move that we uh, uh, decide whether or not, or decide that the board uh, has a co-presidency shared by Nancy Danhoff and John Austin. Okay. If I can ask for a roll call vote that uh, Mertz will walk us through here. Reason, uh, can I, uh, point of uh, information? Yes, please. Um, I thought we were going to take a vote on whether or not to have the position, not who would be in the position. That would be true. I think that's, I think that, that, I think that would be a clarification. Okay, well, let's, let's do that if that's, if yeah, that's acceptable. It really is a motion to amend. It's a motion in alignment with the, the board motion. with the bylaws. Uh, to uh, allow for a co-presidency. Co that's basically cycle. back to what, so if that's... I have, a, I have another uh, point of information. Um, when there's a bylaws uh, change, uh, don't we have to have a month or two's uh, notice before changing that? It is in our bylaws that that possibility exists, Mary Ann, so I think we just need to vote on whether we want it in this situation or not. Okay, so it is existing in the bylaws that's on the table, and if I can ask uh, Marilyn for a roll call vote. <coughs> okay, so you're, vote, you're voting for the Office of Co-Presidency, is that where we've For landed? the concept of For the Office, the, it's whether or not the State Board um, would allow for Co-Presidency, the Office election. of Co-Presidency at this election. Mm -hmm. Slight restatement on whether or not we'd like to fill the office. I mean, so the office exists in the bylaws already, it sounds as though. So I yes. think the question is whether or not we'd like to currently fill the office of co-presidency. Mm -hmm. Is that acceptable? Yes, it's totally good. acceptable. I'll keep on amending with great ideas. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. Sorry, I'm stumbling through this a little bit. Not helpful. But um, so please, if you would have a roll call vote, Marilyn. Okay. John Austin? No. Nancy Danhoff? Yes. Mary Ann McGuire? No. Kathleen Strauss? No. Cassandra Albridge? No. Daniel Varner? No. Eileen Weiser? Yes. Richard Ziley? Yes. 5 3. 3 ayes, 5 noes. So the motion fails. Okay. So now we move to that first motion. Sorry. Everyone satisfied with that? Move yes. to the first motion, which is um, nominations had closed, uh, but I want to make sure that's still clear. And this motion is for John Austin as president of the State Board of Education. Any further discussion? We can have a roll call vote, please. Okay. Point of uh, procedure. Yes, can, can you can you legally vote if you're not physically present? Mm -hmm. Yes, if yes. there's a quorum here. Mm -hmm. Need to have a quorum yes. present. Okay, this, this uh, vote is for John Austin, President of the State Board of Education. John Austin? Yes. Nancy Danhoff? Yes. 
Mary Ann McGuire. Yes. Kathleen Strauss. Yes. Cassandra Albridge. Yes. Daniel Varner. Yes. Eileen Weiser. Yes. Richard Ziley. Yes. Unanimous vote. John Austin, President of the State Board of Education. Congratulations, John. Congratulations, John. Congratulations, Thank you. John. And thank, thank, thank you. the board for that, uh, that vote. Appreciate it. Like that uh, positive signal for our constituents on the, on the, sec the second vote. Now I open the uh, nominations are in order for vice president of the state board, Eileen. I nominate Nancy Danhoff. Her six years of service on the State Board of Education, her vast experience in a variety of settings in K-16 through education, her service as the NASB delegate, all lead me to believe that she would be an exemplary member of the Executive Committee and an extraordinary liaison to the legislature and to the governor uh, uh, in, a, in our current situation. Thank you. Any further nominations? I'd like to nominate Cassandra Albrecht. Marianne, thank you. Cassandra Albrecht is on the table, nominated. Any further nominations? Can I ask in reverse order, as it says, whether or not those nominated uh, would, it, would accept the nomination? Cassandra? Yes. 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 Nancy? yes. And as there are no further nominations, um, each, each member of the board will give the name of the nominee for whom she or he is voting. So in this roll call, that's, that's the procedure. You'll mention the name that you're voting for in this particular case for Vice President of the State Board of Education. And, and Mertz, if you would have a roll call to that effect, please. John Austin. Cassandra Albrecht. Nancy Danhoff. Nancy Danhoff. Mary Ann McGuire. Cassandra Albridge. Kathleen Strauss. Cassandra Albridge. Cassandra Albridge. Myself. Daniel Varner. Cassandra Albridge. Eileen Weiser. Nancy Danhoff. Richard Ziley. Nancy Danhoff. Five three vote in favor of Cassandra Albridge. Well, as, uh, as chairman, I declare the name of uh, Cassandra Albrecht as elected vice president of the State Board of Ed. Nominations are now hereby in order for the Office of Secretary of the State Board of Education. Eileen Weiser, please. Actually, I defer to John. Yeah, I John. would like to nominate Nancy Danhoff for all of the reasons uh, we've articulated already for Secretary of the State Board of Education and as a uh, strong partner in advancing our agenda. Any further nominations? Nancy, would you accept this? Yes. Thank you. So a roll call, please, again. John Austin. Uh, in yes, okay. Nancy Danhoff. In favor or, or not of Nancy Danhoff, Secretary of State Board of Education. Yes? Yes. Nancy Danhoff. Yes. Mary Ann McGuire. Yes. Kathleen Strauss. Yes. Cassandra Albrecht. Yes. Daniel Varner. Yes. Eileen Weiser. Yes. Richard Ziley. Yes. Unanimous vote, Nancy Danhoff, Secretary of State Board of Education. Thank you. Nominations are now in order for Treasurer of the State Board of Education. Cassandra, I would like please. to nominate Mary Ann McGuire for Treasurer. Any further nominations? Mary Ann, would you accept that nomination? Uh, yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Any further nominations? Then roll call, please, for Mary Ann McGuire as Treasurer of the State Board of Education. A or nay for Miriam McGuire, Treasurer, State Board of Education, John Austin. A. Nancy Danhoff. Aye. Miriam McGuire. Aye. Kathleen Strauss. Aye. Cassandra Albrecht. Aye. Daniel Varner. Yes. Eileen Weiser. Yes. Richard Ziley. Affirmative. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous vote for Mary Ann McGuire, McGuire for Treasurer State Board of Education. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Mary Ann. Congratulations. And then finally, uh, nominations are in order for the NASB delegate uh, from the Michigan State Board of Education. Go ahead. I would yes. like to nominate uh, Richard Ziley for the NASB delegate. I will tell you that the first thing I found out when I came on the board uh, six years ago was that there was a NASB delegate. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know there was such an animal. And that uh, it was probably one of the most fortuitous situations that I found myself in to be nominated for that. 
um, it truly is an opportunity for you to uh, see not only uh, what else is out there in education, but to also be able to benefit from the peers that you have in the other 49 states and how their education <coughs> systems function um, so that we can gain and garner the best ideas possible and to bring and come together for a networking of um, best ideas and research on what needs to be done on the next leading education issues in the, in the country. Um, I valued my last six years on that board and I think it is a phenomenal opportunity for any of us and so I think Richard would, would not only would we benefit by having Richard but will his peers around the country will benefit by having Richard as well. I'd like to I'd like to second the nomination uh, unnecessarily, but also because I think it's uh, terrific that Richard will be our, our advocate at NASB and will be a terrific um, ambassador for our uh, reform agenda nationally, and he'll learn a ton, as Nancy said, about uh, his peers and our state board work. So, look forward to that. Thank you. Are there any further nominations? And Richard, would you accept that nomination? It's an unanticipated honor. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll have a roll call vote to that effect. I or nay for Richard Ziley for NASB delegate. John Austin. Aye. Nancy Danhoff. Aye. Mary Ann McGuire. Aye. Kathleen Strauss. Aye. Cassandra Albrich. Aye. Daniel Varner. Aye. Eileen Weiser. Aye. Richard Ziley. Aye. Unanimous approval of Richard Ziley for NASB delegate to the State Board of Education. Great. Well, uh, could I just take a, a minute or half a minute to uh, say thank you to Nancy for uh, all her years of service on on the board, on the NACB board, and for uh, representing us nationally uh, so aptly. So thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Marianne. I second that. <laughs> Great. Thank you. And congratulations to all the officers and the delegate. John, please. Can I just say a word? As I, one, I appreciate your um, unanimous support for President, and I look forward to uh, trying to uh, model and live up to the example Kathleen has set. Uh, we need to work together, and we will. Uh, we're going to be a, an amazingly inclusive uh, group. Uh, let me just say, uh, as we now have decided on officers, uh, our coming together across party lines will continue, if I have any way to encourage that. Uh, as Eileen noted, our, we don't have an executive committee. We have an informal um, senior officers exec or, uh, advisory group or agenda planning group, uh, which has historically been informally, not in our bylaws, because we've resisted having a formal executive committee. We've had an agenda setting group that includes the President, Vice President, Secretary. Let me also say I'm committed to make sure that uh, agenda planning group and all our work is inclusive to all. So all are welcome to participate in all of our processes, <coughs> planning and others. Uh, if we have to call special meetings and make sure we have a forum there to do that, we will do that. Uh, and uh, want to continue the pattern that we've had of strong uh, collaboration uh, because the work is so important and as our former um, colleague Reggie Turner noted uh, we have to rise above politics uh, as a State Board of Education and take the opportunity to take that long view and work together and uh, let me just note as we decide on officers we have a uh, board that's 5-3 Democratic majority we have three officers who are Democrats and two officers that are Republicans which is a fine pattern for modeling the inclusion in our formal decision making. Not that those officers' roles mean a lot. They mean what we make them to be. And as our total board work does, everyone will contribute and does contribute whether they're an officer or not. And I need your help if I'm going to serve effectively as president to uh, work together and to uh, tap your energy, excitement, enthusiasm, and commitment in a powerful way and I'm going to be looking more to you all not less as president of the board but I appreciate very much your support I also appreciate the spirit in which this discussion was had today about our configuration so thank you thank you 
Um, I've got as a transition point. Now I'm glad I did even more so. I think it's a, just a quick podcast. I had asked uh, Governor Granholm if she might be able to stop by before she left, and I had asked the same thing of uh, Governor Snyder. And, well, this is what happened, and we didn't anticipate it was a last-minute thing, but this is kind of what happened. I thought I'd share it with you. And to, to thank our staff, we have some great folks here at MDE. You now, as state superintendent, I, I couldn't have been luckier to have been here during a time of Governor Granholm, who got what we needed to do, who started the ball rolling in a dramatic way towards student achievement being the first and foremost thing, and took on some tough forces, the high school graduation requirements. And then I had an opportunity. <laughs> last week for some time with the Governor-elect Snyder, and I, I just, I don't have to say this, we're kind of independent, although kind of independent, but I, I was so impressed and I thought this is the right person for the right time to take this and move it the next step along with his partner. <laughs> you know, I'm not into sucking up, I mean, I think... <laughs> I think oh, yeah. that I, you know, there's no reason that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to the program. <laughs> One other thing, I mean, it's going to show because this drives me every day, uh, and I know we we had a great staff meeting earlier this week where I can't tell you, Governor, Governor elect, Lieutenant Governor elect, this. I've worked as a local superintendent, intermediate, association. This is the best team I have ever worked with. They are dedicated to the kids and to the state. And uh, I just, we didn't want to miss the opportunity. We had a chance to say that in front of you. But this is what drives me, and we each have our own version of this. <laughs> <laughs> our granddaughter, Ella Grace. And in fact, I replaced my official picture in the front here with that. And, uh, <laughs> drives me every day, and we have our own version of trying to think, so the, the thing we've been talking about is reimagining education with Governor Granholm and now with Governor Snyder. And I think if, if we, if there is an urgency. I mean, already these kids are wired so differently than we are. And for us to still use the same methodologies that we've had is not going to work anymore. And we, we're getting to individual education plans for all children, which we should have done a long time ago. But we, the urgency is the system needs to be dramatically different before Ella Grace gets to school. It should be now. You know, as state superintendent, I, I couldn't have been luckier. We didn't do this twice. Here but, during, <laughs> but I thought it was a great timing in a way to show that they were willing to come over in a bipartisan way. You don't often see that in transitions. You know, sometimes each of it's, it's the predecessor and the successor are often a little uh, cautious about being uh, seen together, frankly, even that. So it was a nice surprise when we got the call. I was actually expecting that if they were to take it up at all, one might come over and say, I can make it over today, and we'd call the staff together real quickly, and another one might. <coughs> so when they worked that out, I thought it was great. Our staff, uh, it really uh, made their day, to say the least. So I thought that would be a way to get us to the next item, which is, from my point of view, one of the most important items of the day, and that's the <laughs> appointment of the State Board of Education Executive. Yeah, <laughs> And as you know, the bylaws of the State Board of Education say that members of the State Board shall appoint a State Board Executive. Um, and so I'd like to entertain a motion. Yeah. Well, it gives me great pleasure to move that the State Board appoint Marilyn Schneider as our State Board Executive. Support. She's been, she's been terrific working with Eileen, and she knows the workings of the office. She's smart. She's got a great sense of humor, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> she knows us all and she, she's going to do a great job I don't know how she's going to do it alone she's going to need some kind of help and we're looking forward to having some uh, policy type assistance along the way too but uh, <coughs> I'm happy to dominate Marilyn as our state board executive I'm sorry I jumped in there too quickly but <laughs> I was so excited about that I will support that it seems to me that most people don't understand what it takes to put together uh, the um, policy decision-making process, the uh, public uh, meetings, the uh, collaboration and coordination between the state board, the department, the legislature, and the governor's office, and the people of the state of Michigan. And Maryland does that phenomenally. And this position is something that is essential, not just important, essential to the uh, full functioning of the State Board of Education. 
Thank you. So it's moved by Cass, supported by Nancy. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Mertz, officially. That was and unanimous, too. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, and I might say in, in this little clip, you heard me say, well, we're kind of independent. We're clearly constitutionally independent, but we are approved in terms of our budget by folks outside this room, the legislature, the governor. And um, as many of you know, this is our first month uh, with 60 fewer people than we had last month. And uh, we haven't been approved to uh, uh, hire any of those replacements yet. We expect and hope that we'll be able to replace half. Um, and that'll, that will be uh, that will become evident in the next month or so. I think the governor, uh, uh, I was invited to, a, I don't think he called it a cabinet meeting, but it was cabinet folks at a budget uh, session last week. And our budget is due for the following year, this Friday. So they're clearly on an expedited uh, attempt to put together a budget. Uh, and we'll just have to wait and see what the impact of that is. Uh, I, I think all departments have been hit significantly, so it's not as if we're sitting here alone. Uh, but as the board knows, and I'm saying this as much for some of our visitors today who are good enough to join us in person, that uh, we're going to still try our best, but this is our third year of pretty dramatic cuts in the department, and um, we're going to continue with folks like Mertz who, who step up to these, these jobs and appreciate their, their service. Okay. 